Hello and welcome. Today we are talking about the absolutely fascinating history behind the Wave Ripper with Warrior Mariner, one of two deluxe figures from the 1995 Kenner toy line. Welcome to the Atoll, your home for Waterworld fandom. On this channel we discuss everything Waterworld, from the novel adaptations and comic books to the toys and board game, and make new discoveries about this cult sci-fi adventure franchise. This video will be taking a close look at the very interesting Wave Ripper vehicle and Warrior Mariner action figure, and the captivating story behind its inspiration. But let's first take a look at that motorized surfboard toy. Here in the packaging, we are welcomed with a painted illustration of the toy in action along with the name, Wave Ripper with Warrior Mariner. On the back of the package, we get an image of the entire Waterworld toy line and directions for how to use all of the toy's features. Looking at the Wave Ripper vehicle out of the package, all of the fine details of the sculpt are present. The rust, the torn fiberglass, the dents, and even the little engine parts all add up to the quality these 90s Kenner toys were known for. Just look at that exposed engine head. So cool. The Wave Ripper features, quote, running boards that fold out to create wings. Even as a kid, this was a feature that always had me a little confused, but I suppose it is meant to imply some kind of hydrofoil device. On the back of the Wave Ripper is this fishy little tail rudder that rotates in all directions on this nicely designed ball joint. On the front of the Wave Ripper, we have this little cross-shaped hole which can load a dual-speared projectile into it and fire it with the tug of the grip handle. A second projectile can be stored on the deck of the surfboard by placing this little peg into its corresponding hole. But where did the inspiration for this toy come from? Like me, you probably don't recall ever seeing such a vehicle in the film, but believe it or not, a motorized surfboard was used as part of the Smoker Armada, and that's where the interesting part of the story begins. Allow me to introduce you to the Power Ski Jetboard, pioneered by inventor and legendary surfer Bob Montgomery, who is also the CEO of Power Ski International, the company that manufactures these motorized surfboards. However, motorized surfboards have a history going back to the 1960s with Boeing aircraft designers creating the first motorized surfboard with funding from Alfred S. Bloomingdale, heir to the Bloomingdale department store, Fortune. However, it was Bob Montgomery's vision of the Power Ski Jetboard that aimed to bring motorized surfing to the general public. Power Ski International planned to do this by gaining exposure in televised media with exciting footage of the unique product. The Power Ski Jetboard appeared in shows like Baywatch and Sequest, as well as special reports on the news, but the Power Ski Jetboard needed a big screen debut, and what better film than Waterworld? Just check out this beautifully dated marketing material from 1993. In the summer of 94, filming begins on the big island of Hawaii for Kevin Costner's new movie, Waterworld. Six wildly painted power skis will be on location slicing and dicing in this futuristic Mad Max type action film. Superstar athletes Laird Hamilton, Vince Klein, and the power skis inventor Bob Montgomery will be riding the power ski in some very exciting scenes. This really is back to the future. The power ski is the hoverboard that you can buy. Intended to be a smoker attack vehicle, a small arsenal of power ski jetboards were sent to the filming location on Hawaii's Big Island. Buzzy Kerbox and Laird Hamilton, inventors of tow-in big wave surfing, and New Zealand-born actor and surfer Vincent Klein, along with Bob Montgomery, reported to the Waterworld set, hoping to be stuntmen in the film riding atop the prototype jetboards. However, these ambitions would go unawarded. 
According to powerski.com, the jet boards were going through a lot of research and development during the filming of the movie. This, or some other reason, forced the power ski jet boards not to be present in the final cut of the film. Some solo shots of Bob Montgomery in full smoker costume riding this prototype jetboard do exist online, and he even got to be an extra in the film playing both a smoker and an atoller. And even though they didn't make it into the film, the power ski jetboards were extremely popular on set. Again, according to powerski.com, the power ski team would take members of the film crew on joyrides around the island. Included in these joyrides was Dave Silva, assistant director on the film and brother-in-law of Kevin Costner, who was so won over by the power ski jet boards that he became a partner in the company and even wrote a film script around the invention that will, quote, hopefully be produced in the near future. Still holding out hope on that one. But is there really no indication of the power ski jet board in the final cut of Waterworld? Well actually, if you watch the attack on the atoll scene very closely, you will catch this very brief shot. That's right, two jet boards center frame, and wouldn't you believe it, the jet boarder in front is wiping out. A sort of fitting end for the story behind the Power Ski Jetboard and Waterworld. I can't tell if Power Ski International still exists as a company because it looks as if their website has not been updated since 2013. The motorized surfboard industry has more rival companies now with most competition offering battery powered options. But I feel that Bob Montgomery should be proud that his invention has been commemorated in this 90s plastic toy. Let's now shift our focus and take a look at the packed in action figure. While Kevin Costner never rode a motorized surfboard in the film, this is another fantastic Mariner action figure, one of four in the toy line. Well actually five if you include the variant Powerbow Mariner. The clothing of the Mariner figure reflects a mashup of the two outfits Kevin Costner wore in the film, with the fish leather pants and ski boots from the beginning of the movie, and this turquoise yachting jacket reflecting Costner's outfit towards the end of the movie. I will cover in more detail the different costumes crafted for the film as I review the individual figures in upcoming videos. Like the entire Kenner Waterworld toy line, the head sculpt is absolutely superb and has an uncanny resemblance to the actor counterpart. The figure even has two knives sculpted into the body, a boot knife along the right leg and a serrated knife attached to the back. The Wave Ripper with Warrior Mariner also includes this machine pistol accessory. Sculpted with loads of detail, this design clearly is directly inspired by concept art and props from the movie. Well, that is my look at the Wave Ripper with Warrior Mariner, another great piece in the Kenner Waterworld collection. And while the vehicle barely made an appearance in the film, it is perhaps the knowledge of the backstory that makes this toy a real standout among the rest of the toy line. Be sure to check out upcoming videos as we continue to discuss the rest of the Waterworld action figures, discussions that will hopefully lead to interesting discoveries about this forgotten cinematic universe. Thanks as always for joining me at The Atoll.